Hello everyone, in this episode of Project No Secrets, we're showing you and test fitting up our R35 GTR brake kit. Now one of the best things about GTR is a lot of parts are interchangeable from 32 through to 34 and one of the most popular things to swap onto a 32 has always been 33 and 34 Brembo brakes. However, they're just not quite big enough to cut the performance most of us are doing these days so people are looking for a better option. Now the R35 does have some parts that can swap onto earlier models, injectors and airflow meters became popular for a little while there. Uh, obviously R35 coil packs is the most popular and common thing to take off that car. But now the R35 GTR Brembo brake kit has become a very popular upgrade for 32 through to 34 models. Why do you ask? Well, it's pretty logical really, isn't it? They're massive. They're overkill for 32 through to 34. Anywhere from 380 to 400 mil rotors on the front and 380 on the back means it is just more than you'll ever need. Secondly, they're OEM and they're Brembo. So therefore, you know, the quality is up there. Uh, they fill up an 18 or 19 inch rim really well compared to some other brake kits on the market. And the last one is, well, you're just keeping it in the family. Um, there's just that stigma attached to having R35 GDR brakes on your R32 to R34. And there's just that little bit of Instagram cool when it comes to having them on there. Now, R35 GTR brakes don't just simply bolt straight onto a 32 to 34. They require an adapter kit for a few different reasons. And the one that we've decided to use is Marion's with Killer 32R to do our conversion. Now, if you've seen Marion's Killer 32R, you know it's one of the best presented and built R32 GTRs on the planet. And he actually designed and had made his own kit five years ago for his own personal car to fit up R35 brakes. Now, a lot of people have checked the car out and said, where do I get one of these brake kits? So, with a bit of downtime during COVID, he's actually developed a kit now that's for sale. The first batch sold out pretty much instantly. And now the second batch and third batch are in production by the guys at Hypertune. So, that's the kit we've decided to use. We're gonna run you through what's in it, and then we're gonna test fit it in the car to show you how it works. So the kit to put on R35 GTR calipers and rotors comprises of dog bones front and rear, which are essentially an adapter to bolt the calipers onto the factory hubs. It comes with a rear hat that you use instead of the factory R35 GTR rear hat for the disc, uh, and it comes with the bolts to fit it up as well. Now the entire kit has been CAD designed then CNC machined here in Australia by the guys at Hypertune. Now it's all done from T6061 billet and uses high tensile bolts. Now, when it comes to R35 GTRs, they're available with 380, 390, and 400 millimeter front rotors. But the dog bone is the same no matter which rotor you get because the caliper actually changes. So you don't have to worry when it comes to which rotor size that you use. Now, another little trick that Marion's done here is actually made them symmetrical so they look a little bit better, but also you can fit either one to either side of the front. So there is no left and right. When he did this, it was actually the first kit that was able to bolt up without having to machine or modify the hubs in any way whatsoever. So a true bolt on item. On the back, same again, there's a dog bone adapter but the big thing with this kit that some other kits don't have is it uses a billet rear hat to put on the brake rotor onto. Now there's a reason for this and that is if you get a factory R35 rotor and you get this one, you'll realise the inside for the handbrake is completely different. So basically an R35 and R32, R34 drum handbrakes are a different diameter. Now some brake kits put a sleeve insert into the factory R35 brake disc, but the problem with that is it just adds more weight, adds more complexity. By having this new billet hat, it's a lot lighter, obviously being billet, less things to worry about. And to be honest, I just think it looks a hell of a lot better as well. We put them on the scales and the factory hats weighed in at 3.9 kilos versus 2.1 kilos for the new billet hat. Now, if you add a sleeve insert into the factory hat, you're looking at more like 4.1, 4.2 kilos. So essentially, it's a two kilo saving of unsprung mass on each back wheel, which is pretty good in our books when it comes to performance as well. Now, it all comes in a raw finish at the moment. We're gonna get all of ours anodized black, but we thought this would be a good opportunity to be able to do a test fit to the car and show you guys how it all gets installed. 
So we're going to start with the front and the first thing you have to consider is the brake dust shield. Like this crappy old rusted one in my hand. Now you can keep it but it does need to be trimmed in this corner just a little bit. But our one's pretty crappy and this is going to have brake duds in a race car so off it goes. Um, what Marion's done with his dog bone adapter is he's got a little groove in here, same on both sides, symmetrical. So when you put it on, it actually fits over this little protrusion out of the knuckle. This little protrusion here is actually what holds the factory brake line on the back. There's a little thread in the back, Vic, so you can keep the brake line and it makes it a pure bolt on. So let's get it on, see how it goes. Now it's strongly recommended when you're working with billet aluminium to use hand tools rather than power tools, unless of course you're pretty experienced at it. And that's just got to do with aluminium threads. If you uh, take them on and off a lot of times, you can wear the thread out a lot easier than you can with steel. These excite me every time I look at them. These are the DBA 5000 series T3 club spec two piece rotors. These things are monstrous, which means they can absorb a lot of heat and they're certainly going to be overkill for our R33 GTR. Now we need to put these on next and one important thing to remember is make sure you do it up with some wheel nuts so that it sits exactly where it needs to be so you can get your tolerances correct for the rotor inside the caliper. So one thing important to remember is to put the drive shaft in so the hub doesn't move around so you know your rotor's square and also bear in mind that these bolts there's a little bit of movement left to right that sort of lets you line it up perfectly. So just make sure you get it lined up exactly how you want before you do it up tight. Now we've put the E-League brake pads in as well just to double check all of the fitment. And as you can see, mint. Last thing to do for our trial fitment on the front is to fit up our TE37s and show that they clear those. So up the back, it's the same situation as the front where you need to modify the dust shield for behind the brake rotor. Now you can either just trim the edge of it off or you can completely remove this outer section. Now if you saw a previous video of ours when we are working on the rear subframe, we drilled out the spot welds to get rid of the outer dust shield, but you have to keep this inner plate because that sits behind the handbrake assembly in the hub and it needs to stay there so you can get the spacing correct. Uh, if you don't use a handbrake at all because it's a race car, well, I guess it doesn't really matter then, you can use spacers, but we got rid of it completely because it's a much cleaner and neater install and we'll probably end up putting some brake ducts on there as well. So our same as the front, bolt up the dog bone, put on the rotor, put on the caliper, job done. Now the rear rotors are the same size as the front at 380 millimetres but have a smaller four piston caliper so clearance is a little bit easier on the rear but one of the things that people love about the 35 brake kit is how much it just feels up the wheel compared to some of the other brake kits on the market. Usually a brake kit for these is big front, smaller rear but have a look at that, it just feels up that rear wheel so well. Well, there it is, test fit of Marion's R35 GTR brake adapter kit. As you can see, the actual dog bones bolt on perfectly with no issue whatsoever. Really the only fiddly bit is just working out the brake shields because uh, you obviously need to modify the front one and you either need to trim or remove the rear one as well. Now you're asking what about brake lines? Well, luckily the thread on the back of the caliper is exactly the same across all the Nissan brake range. So your R32 through R34 braided brake line kits will just go straight into this caliper. Next question you've got is, what about master cylinders? Well, Marian said that he's been using a BM57 IE, an R33 or R34 GTR brake master cylinder on his car for the last five years and the pedal feel is fine and it drives great even with the ABS system. Now we've got a pedal box in our car so we've got a lot more options for brake balance and bias etc um, but it may require a little bit of mucking around to get it right with a circuit car but for a street car BM57 master cylinder works perfectly fine. Now if you want to get one of these kits for yourself, you've got a few different options. You can go to one of our online stores which is GTR Hub 
The link is in the description for the video below on YouTube. Uh, or you can contact the guys at Hypertune to order a kit. Uh, or if you've seen Murray and floating around various Facebook GTR groups, just send him a PM and you can order yourself one of these kits to put R35 GTR brakes onto your R32 through R34 GTR.